this lesson, I'm going to be talking about a thing called overhang. Slightly complicated. Let's talk about the fly line. Well, we know that the fly line is comprised of two parts, the head and the running line. And the head is the bit that loads the rod. The head on this fly line is 36 feet long. So to fully load this rod, I need 36 feet of line out of the tip of it. Understood? And then the thin bit of line is called the running line. And all that does really, it's like um, a tail on a kite. It stabilizes the head whilst it's flying, but also it means that you can retrieve the head back to you with a fish on it. Okay, it's a bit like a harpoon. You throw a harpoon and then you pull it back with the rope. The running line is the rope of the harpoon. It doesn't do anything to load the rod, it just pulls the line back. Right, now that we understand that, what is overhang? Well, if we know that the head, in this case, is 36 feet long, and we need that head to be out the tip of the rod, well, what happens if we extend 37 foot of line? Let's say the head and a foot of running line. Well, that foot of running line is called overhang. Okay, it's where the head has overhung the tip of the fly rod. Now, the amount of overhang that you can handle depends on your stroke length, and we've discussed stroke length before. If you've got a very long stroke length and you use a lot of body movement, you can handle more overhang, maybe two foot, three foot, maybe even four feet of overhang. If you've got a very short, compact stroke, you might not even be able to get the full head out of the tip of the rod anyway. You might have a quarter of the head still in the rod rings when you make the final cast. Or you might have the full head out and no running line, no overhang. But if you've got a short stroke, you will not be able to manage one foot, two foot, three foot, or four foot of overhang. You don't have the stroke length. There's too much line out the tip of the rod for your short stroke length. We know this from the previous tutorial on stroke length. Think of overhang like a cannonball. If I'm holding a cannonball here, how heavy does it feel if I hold it out here? It feels much heavier, doesn't it? Now hold the cannonball here. It feels much lighter because it's closer to us. It's the same with the head of a fly line. The further the head is out and away from the rod tip, the greater the effect of weight it has on the rod. And if you have too much overhang and the head is too far away from the tip of the rod, the, over, the thin running line can't control and manage the head because it's too far away. It loses its authority on it. Because it's only thin, it can't control it. And the, the head feels very, very heavy. It feels heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. And the rod buckles under the load. Unless you've got an extremely long stroke and you can reach back and sort of hook that head again and stroke it out. But if you've only got a short stroke, having too much overhang is gonna cripple your cast every time. Let me show you in real time what overhang is. This line is called a short head line. And there's a trademarked innovation that I made called an overhang marker. It's this red section of line. Okay, we've got the white head of the fly line now here at my line hand there. That's the beginning of the head there. Okay, and then we've got this red section. That's called the overhang marker. And then the overhang marker runs out and we go back to white running line. So we go head, overhang marker, running line. Now, there are two color fly lines out there, but they don't have an overhang marker on. What do I mean? Normal two color lines, here's the head, and this color change happens at the running line, and then this bit stays red for the whole running line. That doesn't tell us how much overhang we've got. If the line is red all the way back through to the running line, you can't gauge it. You can't gauge how much running line there is, and you can't gauge 
how much is too much overhang. This overhang marker has been designed to tell you, do not go past this red bit here. If you've got this bit of white running line out of the tip during false casting, you've got too much overhang. This back end of this overhang marker here tells you that is the maximum amount of overhang you can have for this particular line. Let me show you. Okay. We know how to slip line. I'm retrieving, retrieving, retrieving. The head starts at my hand here and I know I want the head to be out the tip of the rod to load the rod fully. So let's start casting and slip that head out. There we go. It's now out the tip of the rod. And just at the tip of the rod, the overhang marker starts and it runs for approximately nine feet to this stripper ring. So at the moment, I've got the full head out, but I've got no overhang. Now, I can extend my stroke length, which means that I can extend some of that overhang out of the tip to increase the load on the rod and fire a longer way, a longer distance. So let's try that now. I'm gonna slip another foot. There we are. I've got a foot of overhang and I can feel that the rod has loaded a little more deeply, but I've had to increase my stroke length. We know that. The longer the line out of the tip, the longer the stroke length you've got to have. Okay, well, I can actually increase my stroke length even more. I'm gonna use a bit of body movement to help me do that. And I'm gonna slip another foot of overhang out of the tip of the rod. So then I'll have two foot of overhang and the 36 foot head. So I'll have 38 foot of line out the tip of the rod. Let me just get this cast going again. Slip one foot, slip two feet. Okay, I've actually slipped three feet of overhang now. You can see from the tip of the rod, there's approximately three to three and a half feet of red overhang marker and then the white head. So I've actually only got about a foot and a half of overhang left before the cast will start to fail. Let me show you. I'm gonna feed all the overhang out and a little bit of the white running line here and watch what happens to the cast. Slip some overhang, slip some overhang, slip some. I've sort of lost control of it. I managed to get it out a little bit, but on the back cast there, the line was, it had um, a big loop in it and on the forward cast, it dribbled out. Let me show you that again. Slip a foot of overhang, all the overhang. And look, the cast has sort of lost all its energy and collapsed. It's because the thin running line can't manage the head because it's too far away from the rod tip. It's lost its connection with it and the head feels too heavy and it almost feels as though it's not connected to the rod anymore. I've got too much overhang. Now, I happen to know that because I've got an extremely long stroke length, I can handle more than this red overhang marker shows. But for the average caster, the overhang marker stops there. I think this one's approximately seven feet long, something like that. And seven feet of overhang for any average caster is a lot of overhang. But I can actually handle more overhang. I can go up to say something like 10 feet but watch me struggle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this properly now. I'm gonna slip as much overhang into this cast. I'm gonna have to pick somewhere to feed this long back cast through some trees there. Open stance so I can see my cast. And I'm gonna slip all the overhang marker out the tip, some of the running line. I'm gonna keep going until the cast fails. But look how much stroke length I'm gonna have to use to keep this overhang in the air. Oh, it's beginning to fail now. Yeah, it's failed. 
No, can we do a bit more? <laughs> can I do a bit more? Wow. Oh, I hit the trees. <laughs> well, I've got 20 foot of overhang there, but you can see how long my stroke length has to be for that. Seven foot of overhang for anybody is a lot of overhang. Here we go, the full overhang marker out. There it is, that's enough for anybody. And it'll fire all the line out. A good rule of thumb is to start with the head at your fingers. Make a cast. Yeah, it went out straight. Okay, shot line. Now start with the head here at the second ring. Oh, that went out a bit further. Okay, and you could still manage that. Now bring the head so it's out the tip of the rod, but you've got no overhang. Okay. It sort of became difficult because I've only got a short stroke length. So bring some head back into the rod tip. Now I've got about a foot of the head inside the rod. Let's try again. And it sings out. Once you know where the cast works best for you and your stroke length, remember it. And remember where the overhang marker was when you released your best cast. And then do that each time. So if I know I can handle, let's say, a foot of overhang, there I've got a foot of overhang, that's where it works for me. Always shoot the forward cast when the red is one foot out the tip of the rod. If you're a beginner and you're struggling to even get the full head out, keep casting until you make a good cast. Remember where the overhang marker was. It might just be at this first stripper here. And then always release the line when it's at the first stripper. The overhang marker is a visual aid to tell you how much head and how much overhang to either have inside or outside the rod tip. Slightly complicated, but critical to knowing how to release the forward cast, knowing how and when to release the forward cast. Most people I see slip line, slip line, slip line, and it all collapses. They think they're going for distance, but all they're doing is they're slipping too much overhang outside the rod tip. They're not increasing their stroke length as they're doing so. So their stroke length can't handle the amount of line they've got out of the rod tip and it all collapses. It's human nature to want to cast further. And what happens is people, they make, it's going well. So you think, oh, I'll slip some more line. It's going well. It's, oh, I'll go for one last, one last one. And that one last one was the straw that broke the camel's back. It, you slipped an extra four feet of line overhang outside the rod tip and it just completely overextended your stroke length. What you needed to do when you slipped line was increase your stroke length at the same time. Then you can have more overhang like I've got now. So how much overhang you have out the rod tip, where your overhang marker is, is specific to you and your stroke length. Rule of thumb, make a good cast and remember where the overhang marker was. Do it again. And that'll tell you how to release the forward cast, how and when you need to release the forward cast. Overhang, critical.